Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another informative video on how to play Vein Top. As promised in the last video, I will be showing you guys a snippet of what I'm working on. I can't reveal directly what it is yet, but I can assure you, it will be a banger. Without further ado, let's jump into another video where I explain what I am thinking when playing Vein Top. In this matchup today, we are against a Yorick. So, Zone of Influence concept will matter a lot. Let's do a quick explanation of Zone of Influence. Zone of Influence is very simple. It's the area somebody can impact in League of Legends. So, whenever we're approaching Yorick, we're going to be constantly drawing out his Zone of Influence to see the range of his E in our brain. So, you're going to have to draw it out with your brain when I'm near the Yorick. But essentially what we're doing is we're drawing out in our brain. And at all times, as we approach him and hit him, we're going to be ready to dodge his E, right? We're going to think about if he shoots it now, how long will it take to reach my current location? And how long do I have to dodge it with my tumble? So I'll tumble, right? Uh, whoever just followed, thank you very much. So let's continue on. Let's start with wave management. We want to get the wave pushing towards the Yorick. So let's hit the Yorick here. Ooh. And keep in mind, guys, I am playing in silver slash gold. So this is a lot lower elo than what I normally play in, but... I want to demonstrate all the concepts in a clean and simple manner. So we're going to poke the... Oh, no. <laughs> so as per usual, we want to poke the enemy champion and reset the minion aggression with brushes, if possible. I did a terrible job there. But here's going to be a good one right there. Auto the Yorick, go into the bush so the minions don't even know. When it comes back to wave management, we are simply building up three waves and crashing. How do you do that? You last it on the first wave, second wave, and you hard crash the third wave. So right now, we're good. We missed one CS. So now you want to hard shove and crash the wave if possible. On wave number three. So we're going to poke the York a little bit. See if we can get out of the ocean. If not, that's not a big deal. Right there is zone of influence concept. And we're going to shove the wave here. Shove, shove, shove. Crashed. And now we'll take our base. Three wave crash. Very simple. All you have to do, last the first wave, second wave, hard shove the third wave. And it, while you're doing that, you have to zone your opponents, so keep that in mind, okay? So let's buy our items. Again, selling our potion, grabbing boots, refill, and control ward. So now we're starting on wave 4. This is wave 4. What York is going to try to do here is build up this wave and build up wave 5, which is coming right now. And then he's going to try to crash it. What I'm going to do in this situation, I'm going to try to freeze the wave by shaving the wave as much as I can and holding the wave in this position, forcing York to walk up, allowing me to poke him. This is what I do on repeat over and over again when I play League of Legends. So, let's do it right here. Zone of influence, as per usual. Let's poke out the goals to get these off the map. And now let's try to clear the wave a bit. We want to slow down the shove if possible. Looks like I'm having a lot of issues right now. Let's try to poke York off the wave. Maybe he might get off. Right there, we didn't dodge. But it looks like I can freeze right here. So I'm going to pull a freeze. I got my refill potion. I'm freezing. Perfect. And we're simply going to hold the wave right here. I'm only able to do that because Yorick did not escort the wave in. If he escorted the wave in, I was forced to respect him. So right now, our objective is to clear the wave as much as we can and keep Yorick here as long as possible. And the reason why we do that is because I have a boots advantage. I can take advantage of boots. Oh. I'm doing a terrible job. I'm gonna try to eat him. Looks like Doctrine wants to gank, but I can't follow up. It is what it is. That's not good. There's a TF here too. I'm gonna level my W here. And looks like my boy's dead. Not much I can do. And then Nocturne should not be pinging Annie. That's our fault. Looks like TF is still here. I am very low HP, 
So right now, the wave is pushing towards York. I am screwed, essentially. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to push the wave. And I'll see if I can crash it. But I don't think I can because I'm playing Vayne. So we got screwed over because of a lot of stuff with the jungler and mid laner. But hopefully our mid laner recovers it. Because he gets free push mid lane. And York ended up going mid, so I can push top here. We're going to try to crash this wave, but I believe this is a cannon wave. This is going to be very hard to push out. I hate being in this position because when you're near the turret and you're clearing a cannon wave, you sit here forever clearing the wave. So here we are. Clear the wave. Go, go, go. Fortunately, we see Kane bot in York mid. So even if uh, TF came top, I'm still fine. So we're going to shove the wave, crash it, and we are going to simply base. We're going to base here. The next two waves are non-cannon. Non-cannon here. The next one's going to be a non-cannon too. And it'll be interesting if they don't re-lane swap again. But I think they're fully lane swapping, which is fine. Walk out of base a little bit. Pop refillable potion until you get almost full HP. Walk back in. Get your second refill potion again, then leave. That's what you want to do. Looks like they're lane swapping. So he's building up two non-cannon waves. Non-cannon here. The next wave's non-cannon. And then he'll crash. When I come back to the lane, my objective is to shave the wave as much as I can and then hold the freeze so they're forced to walk up. But in this situation, I'm against a ranged champion. So we'll see what I can do here. So let's walk up. Let's clear the wave. Looks like they're going to swap back, which is fine. My objective again is to clear the wave. Fundamental gameplay right here. Uh, looks like I can't freeze the wave and looks like I just got hit by that. My bad. And the reason why I can't freeze is because the next wave is too far away, so you'd be sitting there tanking for too long. Plus, York was escorting the wave in, so there was no way I was holding it. So now it's just last hitting. Oh, terrible timing. Okay, good timing. So now we're going into a three-wave cannon crash. The first wave is a cannon wave right here. Wave number one. The next wave is a non-cannon that just spawned right here. And this wave after that is a non-cannon. Your objective here in this situation is to zone your opponent from touching the wave. And try to poke them down as much as you can. So let's try to zone. And just to last it. You only want to last it in this situation. So, non-cannon touches. Zone of influence concept. And now we're waiting for the next wave, which is a non-cannon wave. Right here, non-cannon wave. And then we'll crash that wave. And then we'll see if we want to stay and poke the York or base. I probably want to stay and poke. Because I'm CSing very terribly. I try to poke him. I'm gonna, I, I don't mind stacking that wave. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, let me run away here. <laughs> okay. He went really aggressive on it. Dude, when does that go away? Okay, I got influenced by the mid laner, so I can't crash the wave. Next wave's a cannon wave. I don't want to be here any longer. But I think I can beat this guy. Uh-oh. Okay. So right there, ladies and gentlemen, I tried timing myself to go in right as the yellow card went down, but then the yellow card was still up when I went in. So I died. My bad. <laughs> Anyways. So right there is decision making. I made a terrible decision to try to fight the TF when I shouldn't have, and I paid the price. If I waited just a little bit longer, I probably would have won, but that was my bad. So, we end up losing a couple minions for this play. We're going to lose a melee minion, the entire cannon, and we'll end up catching maybe two of the mages at best. So yeah. That's what happens when you die. When you die, you lose a lot of tempo. Can't get, back, get, can't get back on the map. Looks like I lost the entire thing. So we end up catching away, which is fine. Alright, uh, yeah, okay. Alright, looks like we have a really odd minion wave stage. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shove the wave. It's a non-cannon non meeting in the middle. So I'm just going to shove it here and figure out what the next wave is. The next wave is a cannon wave. Okay, so it'll reset the play once I clear this. I'm going to ward here. Push out the wave. I'm going to quickly ward here just to have the entire lane warded. And I'm going to focus this guy. Dodges E in a second. There it is. And this player has goals. You get overgrowth stacked off of it. Poke the York for free when he's last hitting minions. 
And in this situation, it looks like I can just one-way crash. I don't have to let Yorick crash back into me. So we're just going to one-way crash on him. The next two waves will be a non-cannon wave. Shove, shove, shove. Shove, shove, shove. As hard as we can. And now let's try to take some plates. We take plates. Slash. We hit Yorick when he walks up. Alright, let's clear the wave. I'm getting yanked by Kane, but that's okay. I'll just kill them both. Nope, never mind. I'll simply walk away. Dude, the K sat inside me for so long. I'm lucky, man. Alright, let's take a base here, grab some items, and head back into the lane. Unfortunately, we based on a non-cannon wave, so we're going to end up losing a lot. It is what it is. Let's walk back. That's what happens when you base on a non-cannon is you get screwed over. So, here it is. We get screwed over, as you guys can see. But the goal? Looks like the goals save my minions, so that's a little W. Is PTA ever viable? Yes, you should run PTA into Lucian, Auction, and Tristana. What do you max first? I'll normally go 2 or 3 points Q, then max W. So right here, we have a cannon stack. Starting on our side, we're going to go do cannon, non-cannon, which is just spawned right now, into another non-cannon wave. Then we're going to crash that and poke the hell out of the turret. That's what we're going to do. We're, our objective is to take two plates on this push right here. Hi, Sasuke. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? What's up, Sushi HD? So... Again, we are simply just last hitting. Simply just last hit, last hit, last hit. Zone the Yorick as much as he can from the wave. And we're waiting for the next wave right here, which is a non-cannon. Looks like it won't reach because the Yorick didn't get his hands on any of the minions. So it looks like we'll end up crashing, which is fine. We'll simply just try to hit whatever we can. Yorick. The goals. Something. We gotta keep these down. We gotta keep killing them. This is a non-cannon wave. Next wave will be a cannon wave that's spawning. Which is fine. I'm gonna take this opportunity to ward real quick. And try to hit the turret a little bit more. Dodge the Yorick in a second. There it is. And now we simply continue pushing. One wave crashing on repeat. And again, normally you'll start one wave crashing from around the 9 to 12 or 13 minute mark. Because you are in a strong position with Berserker Greaves and Vamp Scepter and Refill Potion. So here we are, one wave crashing. Then continue to poke Yorick. Being ready to dodge his E if he shoots it. Uh, I didn't dodge it. Yikes. Yikes, yikes. Alright, continue one wave shoving. I don't mind getting ganked right now because I can probably kill Twisted Fate, Kane, and Yorick if they try to gank me. BS coming top. It's probably gonna flash right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay. Looks like I won't get another plate because the Yorick ult is really annoying to deal with. So, let's continue one wave crashing. We're pulling Twisted Fate top, so hopefully it opens up Annie to do something, maybe. In this case, she's trying to kill Kane, so hopefully it pays off. Very nice. Kane went back to jail. He was inside Annie. But, let's continue pushing top right here. And, essentially, we're just one wave shoving on repeat, and... Slowly taking the place. However, something I can do in this situation is on this cannon wave right here. I can push this cannon wave by contesting it fast and take the herald. So, notice how I'm going to do it. I'm going to shove the wave right here. I'm going to ping that I'm going to herald. I'm going to leave one mage minion on purpose so that it stalls the wave a little bit longer so that Yorick doesn't have access to it immediately. So I have more time to do this herald, essentially. 
And essentially what I did there was I created a timer to rotate to Herald off of the cannon wave. So here we are, taking the Herald. And now Yorick can push out the next wave top lane, but by the time I'm done Herald, I should be able to catch the wave top lane. So here we are, taking the wave. Hopefully we don't get rotated on. One more eye, please. Uh-oh. Looks like I end up losing minions top, but it is what it is. If you do a two-wave crash, you'll normally won't lose a minion on the next wave, but in that situation, I end up losing three melees. It is what it is, but we get the Herald, which is not bad. And now we are doing a... Normally you do a three-wave crash here, but I want to base, so I'm going to do a two-wave crash in this situation. Wait for the next wave, which is a non-cannon. Actually, I'm comfortable to stay for three waves. Let's just, I don't know, let's just shove, let's shove. Let's shove this, shove the next wave. So now we're doing a two-wave crash. One cannon plus one non-cannon. And let's just take the turret. And because TF ulted bot lane, I'm going to push the next wave that's spawning right now, which is a non... Which is a cannon minion, actually. Yeah, it's a cannon minion. We're past 15 minutes. Never mind. So hopefully uh, I don't have to deal with this. This is bullshit. I, uh, I, uh... That guy growing baby more than my family line. I, uh, yeah. Okay, let's push the wave top. What's up, Emma Zix? How are you doing today? Let's continue pushing top. Let's take the tower and get the hell out of here. What's going on over here? There's a play, so I'm going to simply join the play. Oh. I'm simply just going to pop my abilities. Move away from the TF so he can't stun my ass. Go on Yorick because he's the low HP target. Oh, come on. Nice. Walk away. Hello, ladies! That's a very simple team fight. Into a base. Let's go. We'll take our base here. We're not going to overstay and die. And we'll come back and cash the top wave after TF shoves it in in a second. Let's grab our items. Probably sell this for a, that item, I guess. I guess it's worth it. Alright, to the top lane we go. Wave's pushing towards us. We'll catch the wave. We'll push out the next wave that's spawning, which is a non-cannon. And then we'll rotate mid and pop Herald and grab the turret mid lane. Actually, we're going to keep going top because Dragon just spawned. So a majority of people's focuses will be on bot lane. So I'm going to simply bully the Yorick and take this top tower. That's what I'm going to do in this situation. Should you still play with Zen even if they have like 4 or 5 AD champions? Yes. And do not get convinced by the noobs that tell you that you should not buy Wits End when they have 580 champions. You should buy Wits End even if there was no MR on that item. So right here, let's push out top. I'm going to try to find an angle to get on Yorick here. Let's see if he walks up. I want to proc my Bark on him and run him down. If not, I'm just going to pop Herald here and let's just simply take the turret. Oh. Dodge is E. Oh, I did. Okay, we got predicted there. Not gonna lie, we, we actually got predicted. So you have to find a balance between poking Yorick and the turret there. Because if you don't poke the Yorick, he's gonna walk up and kill you. But if you don't poke the tower, you're not gonna take the tower down. So you gotta find that balance. So there you go. We found that balance. Pop some wards. Take the enemy Krugs. And let's take a base after. Alright, let's simply take a base. We have a massive gold lead. We're going to take a base and continue going top lane here. If I bot lane based and went mid, which is what they're supposed to do in this situation, I would go bot lane to have access to this turret. But I don't think the people here will do that. So I'm going to simply rotate top. There's a mid wave that Annie is not catching. So I'm going to take that from her.
simply take the wave. And now I'm going to rotate top because Yorick is pushing the top wave and I want to catch that wave. Going mid is better since you're fed. I like to just keep side laning on repeat over and over again. That's my play style. But here we go. We have to catch a big wave that's coming in. So let's catch this wave. Clear the goals. Maybe I could have ran him down there. It's a play. Looks like he's giving it to me. Okay. He should have just ran away. I would have let him run away. Let's rotate back here and try to grab this mage minion right here. And let's push out this wave. And we're going to keep getting further and further ahead. And as you can see, again, I have a massive lead over the enemy team. And I haven't done anything crazy this game. It was just very simple wave management stuff. A couple simple mechanics when it came to fighting the Yorick. And we went from there. And let's continue pushing. Maybe we can grab this red buff here. What's up, Straw? How you doing today? What's up, Flag? Let's grab this red buff. Let's grab a couple fruit plants. And I guess in this situation, I can rotate mid and grab the mid turret because I already crashed the wave top lane. So I'm not going to be losing anything top lane, and I'm gaining in the mid lane. Hopefully the minions got me covered. I'm dead. Goodbye. But we got the mid turret. As long as you type worth in all chat. No, don't do that. Anyways, we got shit on. It's okay. The next item we're going to buy is not a wit's end. It's a QSS. And the reason why is because we're going to be on the side lane, making it very easy for Twisted Fate to access us in the side lane, which means I'll get stunned. If I have a QSS, I'll be able to escape his stun, allowing me to dodge other things and start outputting damage a lot faster. So unfortunately, since I'm dead, Yorick can push for free and I'll probably end up losing unless Annie catches the wave, maybe? Unless she should catch top so that MF can catch mid. There's a big wave. Don't catch it. I'll run bot lane. Annie, go bot. Go top. Ah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I'll go bot lane here. Your turret has been destroyed. <clears throat> the bot lane we go. So, this is decision making. I am going on the opposite side of the map relative to where everyone's going to play. Everyone should be playing around Baron. We'll see, because but Drag's in a minute 30. So what we're going to do is we're going to shove the way past the halfway point as per usual. This is the halfway point right here. And top and bot lane. From here, you have two options. You continue going or you rotate to the play. In this situation, I don't like my teammates. So I'm going to continue pushing the side lane. Even if the enemy team does Baron here, I don't care. I'm going to keep going. So here we go. I'm going to keep going. And looks like they're going to send Twisted Fate, Kane, and Caitlyn for me bot lane. So I should probably run. Yep, keep going. I'll just outplay it when the time comes. So now mechanics will come into play because I'm getting ganked by multiple dudes. But as I say, I can take on five guys at once. So here we go. I cannot take on five guys at once. So we end up going down. It is what it is. And I am talking about the food place. If you guys don't already know. <clears throat> All right, let's sell our items and grab our items towards Wit's End here. And after Wit's End, we're going to grab a Randuin's because it seems like I am getting demolished by the Caitlyn, Kane, and Yorick. <laughs> All right, Dragon spawning in 17. Looks like I'll end up rotating for that. Whenever you're dead and you're just spawning and an objective is coming up, you can't normally side lane. You have to run straight to the objective. So this is one of those situations where I'm going straight to the objective. So let's go here. Let's try to get to the dragon. Uh, I, hmm, it looks like it's, it's gone. I'm going to be quite honest. But I'm going to copium walk towards it anyways because I have nothing better to do. Everyone, take a huff of copium together. Maybe Nocturne can steal this. The silver gold nocturne can steal this, guys. Uh, he did not do it. So let's simply push mid lane and rotate to the opposite side objective, which is bot lane, even though MF is there. 
But regardless, we'll end up going bot lane because you don't want to go to the side where everyone's playing on. Looks like Annie's making a play over here. Some kind of flash tippers play that didn't work out, but that's okay. Looks like we can just team fight here. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, I'm gonna... Oh, that guy has Edge of Night. I'm gonna walk bot lane and see if I can kill Yorick, even though this MF is in the lane. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Up goes, fuck it. I'm gonna make weird movements so I can dodge his ability. And then we'll simply make a play, kill a couple of them, and then we'll push bot lane. Very simple stuff. Let's continue pushing. Looks like mid lane was already pushed by Soraka, which is a very good job on her part. So let's continue pushing here and grab the bot lane turret. Alright, let's take the inhibitor too. Let's see if I can do this. Nope, never mind, I'm getting kited. Kite back! Alright, we'll simply take a base here and come back to, into the game and probably group up mid or top. We'll see. How do you kite? You click backwards and then you click on the target that you want to hit. Five head. Alrighty, let's grab our wits end here. Let's grab a Kindle gem and let's head towards top lane. What we're going to do here in this situation is we're going to let bot lane push on its own because they're super minions. And then we're going to rotate top and pressure top lane, even though that's the side of the objective. Because I want to uh, gear my gameplay around grouping right now. However, it is an option to actually continue pushing bot with supers by yourself. That is a play that you can make sometimes. But I'm going to go with more traditional play. I'm going to simply go top lane and kill this Yorick. Simple mechanics, straight to the point, kill the Yorick, call it a day, and then we'll group with my teammates and fight with a numbers advantage. Alright, let's simply group with my teammates and then maybe make a play where we have numbers advantage. And let's see what we can do here, and hopefully we don't get uh, Baron stole from us. Uh, uh don't worry about it guys. He ended up getting the smite, which is all that matters, right? Alright, let's grab a couple fruit plants here and head to the top lane. I smell black magics. And let's simply push out top lane. This is what I'm thinking about. Okay, if Kane comes in, how do I dodge sideways? Because he's going to shoot his W straight at me. How do I time my QSS right when TF's yellow card hits onto me? And how do I dodge Yorick E and not get stuck inside his W? That's what I'm thinking about right now. Dodge the Yorkie. Kane W in two. There it is, the Kane W. Simply tumble towards them. And kill the Yorkin. We'll call it a day. Very nice. And again, very simple things when it comes to side laning. You just have to think about what the enemy team can do and how you're going to play around it. And from there, you have to execute it with your mechanics. Let's continue pushing the wave, and the game should be over here. Very nice. GG. Well played. Victory. And again, ladies and gentlemen, let's break down some of the things that we did in that game. As you can see, a lot of that game was focused around my mechanical execution in the mid game. It's my ability to take down multiple people at once. So it came down to breaking down the gameplay before I already said, I thought about, okay, what do I need to QSS? How do I, what abilities do I need to dodge? That's important. And then I executed from there, very simple. And then Zone of Influence was a big role in that game too, where constantly when I, I was around Yorick, I would think about where his abilities were and how I'd have to dodge it and stay in range to do what I need to do. And then wave management, as you can see in the early stages of the game, I crashed the waves properly. I froze the waves properly when I had to. And then I made Yorick have a lot of issues in the laning phase. And then just a lot of decision making when it came to mid game. So again, the four pillars of League of Legends on repeat over and over again. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and have a good rest of your day.